Scratch Kiss, ah, la, 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 Scratch Kiss Academy. It is Eden Day. So uh, before we uh, jump in, um, please check out all of the links that are going into chat right now. Um, and a special thank you to our awesome sponsors in the form of Bird in the Storm, where you can get a mug the same size as my head in the links down there, and also Mage Hand Press. Um, other than that, let's, as I say every week, start how we always start. Hi, Hans. Hey, how's it going? I'm Hans. I am here because Eden is fun and we're all going to have a fun time and nothing bad will happen this entire show. Uh, you and chat, you guys can all contribute to that by not letting Alice do terrible things to us. So please don't. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> oh, I would never. Um, let's have a look. Then we're going to pop around and say hello to Zelda. Hello, Zelda. Hi, I'm eating an apple chip. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm playing Vestal and I am going to kill Adam. He's dead. He's dead. He never existed. Gone. That is my statement. That's Thank you for the, my TED talk. That's the spirit. Okay, let's hop around. Very lovely. Tis aliens or heavenly. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Tis aliens or heavenly. I'm playing Coil, and Coil's ready to um, de escalate the situation. They've noticed that everyone's pheromones, thanks Zelda for that, have activated. And so Coil's really just going to take control of the situation. They're just gonna kill Adam. It's not a big deal. No one needs to freak out. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Okay. Then we're gonna hop around and say hello to Bree. Hello, Bree. Nothing is fine. Everyone is wrong. This is a terrible thing. We killed him once and now he's back. This is awful. But hi guys, it's NPC Bree. I'm playing Dot, the one who killed Adam the first time. Um, and now he's back in Back for Revenge because everyone wants a little bit of this hot underground doctor dot. Um, and he's back to- <laughs> He's back to kill. Dot's gonna have to kill him again. Because fuck him, he's hurt too many of- too many of her friends. Fuck, I'm freaking out! I can't even act confident, I'm so shook. <laughs> Once again, as they say every session, breathe, breathe, breathe. No. <laughs> we're gonna hop over to the very lovely Rene. Oh, I can see her snacks and I really want them. I hid them so that they are not tempting <laughs> to anyone else. Um, I am Rene and uh, I'm going to be at Eden next week because the work trip that I have that keeps coming up also keeps getting pushed back. So I get to be here for Eden next week, which is my birthday, so I get to spend it with my fam. Anyway, um, that's all an aside, I guess. I'm Renee. I play JD. I am having a hard time, as I think we all are. Um, I'm down for cake next week, and things are very uh, tense, so cake always goes a long way to... Um, words is the process yeah so you can like tell this. we're all a little flustered i blame adam watson <sighs> cake always makes everything better we always have cake in this game which yeah. i'm in full support of may bring cake next week as it is renee's birthday um other than that last week everyone adam watson came back he appeared on a giant screen and i had a little bit of a speech as this recorded message came through and that's where we're gonna jump into right now as Adam Watson still on the screen smiles I've unlocked the door and all the screens start to shut off just doof 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 and then all the way across Eden the lights go off the neon signs go off, the car lights, everything starts to shut down as you are all thrown into darkness. I want to use a two-sided coin. You can. One, two. Oh, okay. Let's see. Mine's not loaded yet. Yeah. 
there we go. What was it you would like to do with this nat 20, effectively? Uh, well, I hadn't really thought of what would happen if it were a nat 20. (laughs) (laughs) I just wanted to see if something bad happened. Um, and it, (laughs) so I seriously considered using a reroll on that, which is ridiculous. So I'm not, I'm going to, how is, is Soren okay when all the power goes out? Soren and Coil are both stood next to you. In fact, the only light you seem to see right now seem to be coming from the bikes and things that are not attached to something else. So like all the um, blocks of flats, all the um, housing has gone down. Okay. All the buildings then, have gone down. Um, I am left hand is shaking, right hand is not, and because it's a nat twenty, I am doing okay right now. Um, and I'm going to find the nearest like electrical panel that might connect anywhere in the city and say, Soren, come on, quick, we have to work fast or else the signal might get lost. And then I want to try and trace the source of Adam's signal. Okay. Um, First of all, thank you to Michael Wayne for the donation for a complication. That will be coming up very soon. I will Uh, not use that on a nat 20. It's okay. (laughs) So... Soren just sort of nods and you can see almost like the only light to guide you around is coming from Soren. And you can see that Coil is also pretty much lit up with the facial sort of expressions. And you know that each screen has a huge panel, effectively. And you can head over there and Soren helps you see Soren sort of clamp her hands over this this box and just rip the front of it off <laughs> inches and lays it down and you see behind sort of like the metal and all the sort of the um, nooks and crannies starts to glow a little bit brighter just to give you that little bit more light. How are you doing this? So... I want to see if I can essentially use my watch as a small interface since it's a a wireless device, Um, but essentially hook it up to the electric paneling that would affect the screens and neon and everything and try to essentially on my little tiny watch face try and narrow down at least a location, general location for the source of this Okay. call. You, this small sort of screen comes up a bit like um, the map you have for everyone reading where they are. And there are hundreds of thousands of these dots popping up and it sends over this information that it's coming from every screen in Eden. Reading is his location. Dang. Even though they've all turned off, you are reading it from everywhere. You are reading it from the hospital. You are reading it from the OTC. You're reading it from your home. Everywhere. How is he everywhere? He's dead. Because he's not everywhere. He's not alive. I don't know who did it, and I don't know if I'm 100% correct. But I think someone might have uploaded his consciousness, or maybe took clips of him before he died and are running him through the system. It might just be very clever AI. Where do you think his signal is coming from? Like, it has to be some kind of main system? Kind of like how we, when we were underground, that was one of the main screens. He's gotta be somewhere 
related to that? The one thing I will say you also get from this is that you can see the power that is, um, you can register a lot of the power and the levels throughout the city and you can see they are shutting down. And it starts to rain. That answers that question. And what time is it? It's about 4 or 5 p.m. Okay. You guess that this rain has started since the screens have shut down. Question, are our bracelets still working? They are still working. Are they connected? They are connected. You can still make calls, you can do things like that. I hear a little bit of static, but it doesn't cue who it is. Uh, my feeling is wherever he's uploaded is probably where we'll find dark-haired woman. She's the one who probably had his consciousness or whatever, whatever Dot was talking about. The only uh, side problem I have as I stand in the pouring rain from the atmosphere is... The last time it rained from the actual sky, we lost an entire district of people. How much time do we have right now before something similar happens? How are we going to keep JD's parents safe? We're going to keep everyone at the clinic safe. How are we going to... I feel like if this Adam is anything like the other Adam, he'll keep them alive just to play the game. Right? Not if the world is supposed to end. We can move people into the ships. Um... There's, there's still just the six of us, seven of us, and people aren't going to trust what we say. I mean, this didn't work last time. I think we're getting distracted again. This is the same thing that happened last time. I think, I think we just got to go. We go, we go to the OTC. We go upstairs from the apartment. We stick to our leads. I think Adam's just interference. We can at least evacuate the clinic and JD's parents. Mom. Just the one. If you he call her, you can probably... If you call them, you can probably send them down somewhere safe. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, uh... I do agree with Artie that this is probably some kind of red herring. He wants us to look at other things. Sidetrack what we're doing. Can we stop saying he like it's actually him? No, I think we need to keep doing that because if he is an AI, he's still a consciousness. Probably a consciousness attached to all of our technology and also um the problem is, is when it comes to Adam Watson, he never gave us red herrings. He said exactly what he was going to do, he just never said it straight. Yeah, but why now? I mean, now that we're actually doing something about this, now he's here? I don't know. And then again, this could be anything. Someone could have just taken some kind of voice mod to scare us. This couldn't, this might not even be him. Yeah. Hey, I was going to go into the OTC no matter what. Let me just keep going. Uh, Dot, you were going to stay out anyways. Why don't you, JD, why don't you go with her and call your parents and call the clinic? And I'll go in there and Vestal, you want to go? I can go. You don't have to. I mean, I can do this. I can, maybe Soren will go with me. I can go by myself. Just don't go alone. Do you want to go with Soren yeah. or do you want my help? 
I mean, I would go with both of you given the choice, but it's like, I, I feel like I'm just really concerned they want us confused. I am a light source, as is. We should mm -hmm. split. Vestal's kind of a light source, too. I do feel I mean, so. God's hair glows. I am not a light source. And you can see people around you, they're sort of... There's not so much a panic, you can hear some people panicking, but it's more of a just a confusion. The lights have never been off before, and it's raining. It's more people sort of... You can hear them muttering about something that's just gone wrong. Some of them are looking at their watches, trying to tap them to see if this is the correct time. There's not a real panic, but yeah. Actually, uh, JD, maybe calling isn't the best idea. Artie said that he might be in our, or interfering with our uh, communications. JD wasn't really calling. She's just sitting over by the panel. So what's the definite plan? Artie, you want to go to the OTC? Yeah, I want to go right now. Let's get it over with, right? I mean, we're not gaining anything. Dot, you're going down to the uh, lower levels? No, I'm going to stay here with Coil. We will stay. We will wait around the back entrance. You can call us if there's an emergency. Me. Coil. And JD, are you staying out here at the panels, or are you going with them? Are you... I said I'd go with you. I understand this is totally different. I mean, this is new, right? Not what we planned on. Sorin rests a hand on JD's shoulder. Where do you want to go? Going where I want to go isn't possible. I... I just have to... come. I just have to keep going. And she'll stand up and kind of rinse out her hair, which is now in kind of a side loopy ponytail. And um, even though it's still raining, <laughs> it's still getting wet. And uh, she's gonna walk over to stand with Artie. Okay, we ready for this? And Soren walks over to stand next to Artie as well, just making that as her decision. But whatever we choose to do, we should act fast. Do you remember everything I told you, Artie? No, but I'm going to try. And I mean, basically, it was don't do things that are dumb, and what would Dot do, and um, you guys will come in if you. we need your help, right? I mean, yeah? Close enough, Artie. I'm just going to try to get some information and get out of there, and we're going to stop this, and you know what? Um, I don't know what I'm doing, but I never do. But I've got, I've got Vestal, I've got JD, I've got Soren. I mean, how much more could I need? That's a good point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
then we should go. And Sorin again starts to fold out into this bike, and her eyes effectively beam and become the headlights in this very, very dark city. Where are Dot and Coil going? Um, back entrance? Yeah, I'm just gonna follow Dot. So is this back entrance to the OTC? Mm hmm Okay. We'll just wait there, not actually going in, but being close in case we have to bust shit up. Yeah, you can uh, all head to the OTC, and it's kind of a rocky ride because you don't see people until the last minute as a lot of these lights are out. But you do know the route there, as does Sorin. And Dot and Coil, you can walk around effectively to the side. You can see a side entrance. There is a guard there. Um, with some, but it's almost, um, I guess, kind of like a glow stick type thing, which he has up just as light. But otherwise, the main doors are open. The front doors are open. Okay, everybody ready? Shoot! We forgot to give them their noodles. I was really looking um, forward to it. Well, they're still in... Soren still has them, I just... You know, Donna has a really good point. We should never get noodles, ever. This is twice. I mean, the first time was coincidence, but this is two times. I mean... You know, Donna is right more than we give her credit for, I think. Hmm. I mean, I just really like noodles. We have not eaten properly in a long, long time. Um, but let's. Uh, okay, let's do this. Go. Okay. Artie walks up to the front doors like he has done once or twice before. And the doors are sort of stuck half open where it's like they've sort of been on the way to close or the way to open, and that's when the power is cut, so it's easy to walk in. Sorry, you see sort of duck and slide um, in between, and you see quite a few people running around. You see the main desk again, that huge open space where um, further back you can see that garden again. Um, again, everything there's sort of all the lights are out. You can see people sort of wheeling around what you know to be almost like backup generators trying to find something. But people seem to be in not a panic, just trying to sort out the problem. And from the center of through, um, as you look through the building where that garden is, you can see water pouring down as the rain comes through. But there is someone sat at the desk, but looking kind of panicked, like, trying to just sort things out. And Soren looks at all of you and like, do we just walk up, or do we ask? Well, I was going to walk up to this desk right here and ask. Okay. And she just sort of takes a step back. So I walk up to the front desk where the security officer usually is. Um, hi. I'm hi, Artie yeah. Chan. I'm... Um, sorry, a bit flustered. Um, Artie Chan, have you got like an appointment? What, what, uh, what, can I, what, what can I help you with? Yeah, I'm here to see my mom. Okay. And she's in some sort of um, detention facility, so I'm just supposed to report here and they're going to take me to her. Right, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm handling with quite a lot. And you see her for the club papers. And this is just not so you should see. And you see her just going through these files and files of papers. It's just like, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, uh, Do you need help with all that paperwork? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then you just be careful with that as it, they sort of, you hear this clunk as one of the small generators sort of falls off the trolley. So, yeah, just. just I advise taking the stairs. 
Okay. Um, please mind they're doing some work um, up on the upper floors um, after last year's problems. But if you get up to at least the fourth floor, they can take you up in one of the emergency elevators to the uh, to your mother. Yeah, yeah, do that. It's fine. Well, we're going up. We're not going down. Okay. Yeah, All right, good. fourth floor. Up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They can't okay. tunnel out if they're up. Uh, weird. Back. Okay. Sure. Artie, didn't they say something about the rest, like us scanning in? Um, I don't think that's going to happen since they have no power. I was actually going to offer let the let Soren go through their paperwork because I figure she could record all that. But that's okay. Uh, we'll just keep going. You're kind of so, you know that. No, I just figured they have no idea what's on all that paper. And you can head up um, these levels, up all of these stairs, and you can see a man in a very sort of a uniform, and you recognize this uniform as a protector of the peace uniform. He stood there again with one of these sort of almost like heavy torch, like glow stick type things, and sort of holds it up to you. And he's just like, Who are you? Uh, I'm Artie Chen. This is Soren, and Vestal, and JD. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, I need to scan you all before you go any further. Okay. Okay. And he just sort of takes out almost like this handheld device and just runs it up and down all of you. Looks at Soren. It goes off multiple times and he checks readings and it keeps going off. And he sort of looks like, how many of them, how many of you are here? Please. I count. I'm reading five and Sora looks at this oh and opens up her shoulder and RT pops out closes it five okay that's fine yep follow me and he takes hey, JD JD yeah where's the other one I don't know I was just thinking that do you mean okay me? Is that what we're calling it? It's a working name. Okay. And this this security guard doesn't seem to be too bothered the fact that you're both whispering sort of kind of loudly behind him. He's always Let's just go like, pick up on the mic, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is why JD and Artie can't do crime. They just whisper really loudly. <laughs> personal information very loudly um but he escorts you and you can see what looks like it's kind of like an elevator but it's more just a platform with railings which you can see is controlled by something completely separate from the building and you go up and up and up and you go further up than you've ever been before in fact you go past the gardens and the gardens are you've always thought at the top and you go past the gardens and you enter almost into the sky and it pauses and it stops it's, here we are okay um thanks yeah oh and he sort of pulls out these keys and it's like he steps into the air and unlocks almost like a glass door, a very reflective door, which is why you can't see any of it. It's reflecting absolutely all of its surroundings, other than yourselves. And it opens up into a very grey, dark room with a corridor with about four or five what look to be, like, doors. So, there you go. I can wait here. Further okay, so... The Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Artie goes in. Yeah. How weird is it? Are we like, it, it looks like we're walking on nothing. Once you're in there, you feel like you're in a normal building. It looks just a very plain, dark room. Um, from the outside, it doesn't look like there's anything there. And the guard hands you 
this sort of again like this glow stick like torch type thing is like you you might need this there's light in the room but it's further down i'll wait here okay hey how does it smell in here alice stale mm. very metallic like everything feels very fresh and like as in like it's been freshly made freshly painted it's that very brand new sort of smell so as already's walking down this hallway he's thinking did it always smell like this in the otc or is this new because he got very used to outside smell which is like a normal smell now but hmm <laughs> Soren follows closely behind. And at the very end of this corridor is a door. And it's almost exactly like your apartment door, Artie. They're all very similar. All the rooms seem to be very, very similar in general. And Soren stops and looks at all of you. And then pauses over Artie. Ah. Uh, you sure you want to do this? You can wait outside if needed. Um, I'm pretty sure my mom's gonna insist on talking to me. But thank you. I understand what you're what you're trying to say. No, I um, I want to just do this so that we can try to get some answers. And she pauses, looks towards JD. If I remember correctly, she does not agree with things like me. Should I wait outside? No, we're not here to make her more comfortable. And again, I mean, she doesn't really believe that I should be having an opinion either. We're going to just everyone who is a person in this room gets to be there if they want to be there. And Soren, you never have to justify who you are to someone, anyone. And she pauses, nods, and knocks on the door. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going to do this now. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a like a window appears, it almost sort of blends through to the door, and you see another guard there. And they look at you, you know, sort of look over all of you, squint at Sorin briefly, and then close the door again. And they open it. And it's very much like an apartment, just that it's very bare. There's nothing personal in there, there's no belongings or anything to that effect and the guard opens the door and gestures for you all to come in okay so already does that do the rest of you follow yeah jd will follow Artie's lead this is his former domain I'm just following up. The guard nods to you all. You yeah, we're just here. Up and down. I'll be the other side of the door. Walks out and closes it and locks the door. That visor mm. is still open. They're not looking through it, but it is open. I, I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, they've got to have power in a detention facility, prison type thing, right? Um, okay, they've got to have cameras and stuff. I'm looking for my mom. You're in a very plain room right now. It's very simple. There is a ta one table, one chair. And as you do this, you can see around the corner into the bedroom. And you see your mother. She stands up. She's in very sort of gray boxy sort of clothing gray trousers gray t-shirt her hair is sort of pulled up and tied up and she walks through and looks at all of you 
Hardy's mother has never looked this dressed down in her life. She does not own sweats or casual clothing. Um, so this is the most shocking thing that could have happened. Visitors. Hi, Mom. Hello, Hello again, Mrs. Jen. Oh. Hello. Willenberg, JD, and Vestal, and Soren. She looks over at Vestal. Yes. And then looks over at Soren and doesn't say anything, but you see sort of a a wrinkle up of the nose and the face. You're not wearing the same thing as each other this time. As she looks over to JD and Artie. We're not fleeing. Uh, we are fleeing people who are trying to kill us, but we're not fleeing you trying to kill us this time. So we had time to change. Yeah, and we only match on Mondays. That was a joke. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Mine was much more topical. She just stares blankly. What What do you want? Um, I would really love it if you would share some information with us because Eden is being destroyed again and we know about the spaceship. We know about people, uh, we know about Telemachus. We know about Adam Watson and where he came from. We know about screen care. And we have two weeks before some sort of catastrophic event destroys the world and we can use any advantage we can get. And she pauses, sort of walks through all of you, takes a slightly wider step around Soren and pulls out the chair and sits down. What do you want to know? I mean, is there anything in what I just said that you can help us with in particular? I mean, we just, oh, uh, number one, how does the weather work? It rains at two o'clock. There's a it's malfunction. Raining. Yeah, it's raining right now, actually. It was raining when we came in. Do you notice how we're all wet? That was not part of our uh, plan. That was something that just happened. What time is it? I'm not allowed time in here. Um, Soren, what time is it right now? It is 5 p.m. So, yeah, it just rained, Mom. And she sort of glances at Soren and says, A walking watch. Brilliant. Okay. So, what is it you want to know? Um, how does the weather system work? And also, I really like Soren, and I wish you wouldn't talk about her that way. Do you want the information? I do, but I am also now having an opinion on things. And that's something I have a strong opinion on that we need to just, you need to know that. Okay, fine, fine. It rains because the sprinkler systems are broken. They are broken in the ship of Eden. 2 p.m., it rains. That's what happens. Do yep. you know where we changed that? No. Look, I was I, I was in charge of diseases and well, you know what I what my job was, and look where it's got me. I have no idea what your job was, um, Vesta. What were you trying to say? I just said that we already knew that it was due to a broken sprinkler system it then why we... are you asking uh, we, we found this all out in the last year we hoped you knew more about what was going on i know that telemachus is a very clever woman a scientist in fact uh, she taught me for a while And then she's abandoned us all and disappeared. Didn't like what we were doing. Where did she go? I don't know. Had an argument with her partner, Dawn, I think it was, a hideous woman. Please tell us more about this woman. She's Dawn, been incarcerated. I... Somewhere. What did she do? Everything. What? She has a god complex. When was she incarcerated? I don't know, I didn't do it. 
I mean, depends like, how many times. I mean, she was incarcerated here for about six years. Does she continue to be incarcerated for the same thing, or does she get out and do things that are bad and get put back in prison? As far as I know, she's currently in a location where she can't get out. It's probably why your friend is shutting down all the systems. However, before that, she'd get out, do whatever she wanted. She killed 12 guards getting out of here last time. She likes to mess about, play. Eden is her plaything. She'll be whoever she wants to be. Like it's a game to her. Yes. And that's one of the reasons Telemachus had her incarcerated. Party, who else does it sound like that we know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, Mom, do you know anything about the connection between Adam Watson and Dawn? And she just like gives that heavy sigh. It's more of a just annoyed now. Like, he was supposed to be. I don't know what he was supposed to be. None of us liked him. And to be honest, we don't know what she saw in him. She had. She, he was her little project, little project for a bigger project. I don't know. She was, she could manipulate. He was a weak boy, not very, you know, up there, which is why he was so easy. He had no opinions. Nothing. So she gave him some. Um, speaking of giving people things, I have a weird question, which is, did I actually grow up and have memories and things like that? Or is that some sort of computer injection or something like that? You grew up. You had a nice home. I fed you. Mm -hmm. I taught you things. I gave you a good education and a roof over your head. What more do you want? I don't want anything from you right now. I'm doing as good as this is going to go. I just really wanted to ask that question at some point because we've seen a lot of versions of making people do things now. I um, at no point erased memories or anything like that. You flatter me. I can't do that. Okay. Um, yeah. I. Is there anything you want to share with us before we leave? Because I'm feeling like we've asked all the questions we can possibly ask at this point. I have something else. And I will pull out the picture of me as a child with the blonde woman in the background and ask her about that. Do you know her? Yes. Do you know where we can find her? What her it's, name is? It's Telemachus. I don't know where she is. I just... I don't know. As I said, Dawn has probably got out and done something. And it's probably got something to do with the edge. And I don't know why. And I don't know how. And I can't do anything in this little box. What would you do if you were out of the box? Run. The only problem no. is, the edge is what Dawn probably wants to break Eden, to break Telemachus's little project. A science fair project. So what, for kicks and giggles, she just wants to watch Eden fall? Yes. She wants to play God. That's why she's gone away. She's a dangerous person. 
she can break Eden. Eden is the thing that contains her. It's what keeps you all alive. If you went as far as the edge, you may not survive. Okay, um... Do you know anything about um, earthquakes, the ground shaking, parts of the ground or the world actually breaking? It's Eden shutting itself down. A virus like has entered the computer system. Must have done. And now everything's being shut down. Uh, is the computer system an organic system that gets people viruses? No, I don't believe so. If you're referring to the virus a year ago, no, it's not that. So you mean a uh, electronic program virus? I mean an electronic bug. Something that's been injected into Eden. And it's crashing. Eden is growing. Eden is always growing. I think this is it stopping. Okay. If you wish to find Dawn, if she's still where she's incarcerated, I believe she's near the edge. It's a long journey. I don't know where it is, officially. Only a few people do. And I don't know any of them apart from Telemachus. But the edge is a dangerous place. It's why we stay here. It's why people don't move too often. We've got everything we need here. Do you have any idea where we can find Telemachus? No. There's nowhere where here. she's... I don't know where Dawn would put her. I'm assuming Dawn's done something with her. Telemachus for Dawn was always person getting in her way, scuppering her plans, not letting her play god with the people of Eden, not allowing her to get to know the people she wants to get to know. I mean, if she's playing god, it would explain whatever weather patterns are happening, what she wants, so. That's just Eden breaking. That's what's on the outside of Eden. The rain is on the outside of Eden. It is. So we're encountering planetary weather outside of the ship. Correct. You've never seen the sky before, have you? The answer must be no. At least not proper sky. Have you seen the sky? No. I've heard talk of it. <sighs> okay. Um, JD, Vestal, Soren, anybody have any other questions? Okay. Um, we're going to go, Mom. Thanks for answering the questions. I do appreciate that. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Anything you want us to do? As she pauses. You may have met Dawn already. She likes to know who she's up against. She can be anyone she wants. She may have walked into your little coffee shop. She may have Watched you drink tea. I don't know. This is all a game to her. And sometimes she likes to drag it out. But I think she's bored now. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in mind. I'm sure we'll all keep that in mind. Um, hey, do you think I should talk to the... Um, Keepers of the peace outside and ask them what they know about this whole situation. Are they going to be able to help us at all? Do they have no idea what's going on? 
and she smiles briefly. I wouldn't tell them anything. Uh, okay. I'm actually going to take your advice on that one. You should. <sighs> we never saw eye to eye, Artie, but I still raised you. I don't want to see I, you dead. I did what you told me to for 19 years. It's just not in me. And she sort of half smiles and good. Also, any keeper of the peace say nothing. Do they even know about the spaceship and all this stuff? They don't know that they do. That is super weird. Um, okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go. We need to go. We have to figure out how to get to the edge now. Okay, um, do you want me to bring you something next time I come back? It's a long journey to the edge. You may not come back. <sighs> yeah, thanks, Mom. Okay, bye. Artie turns and walks out of the detention apartment. Yeah, you can knock on the door. Soren opens it for you, even as before the man gets there, she sort of pushes it open and always guides you out. Thanks, Soren. Before, before quite leaving, she's like, first off, we'll come back because the world isn't ending. We'll figure it out. Second off, Soren is not a walking watch. She's technically a walking motorcycle. And she is also the best friend I could ever have with Artie being a very close second. So I don't much like you, but I like your son. And you should like my best friend. And then she walks away. And she smiles, shrugs, and goes and closes the door herself after you. She could have just asked for like a sandwich or something. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it, but, you know, this time last year, she was just going to kill you all. I mean... Character development. <laughs> I guess it's an improvement. No, I wasn't saying that. I was I was just saying, like, I don't think we were going to get anything out of that. I was actually very surprised by the amount of information she gave up willingly. Yeah, it's funny that... Um peacekeepers are not making me feel very peaceful all of a sudden and this has been such a recent thing um they didn't help last time either so yeah and as you sort of walk down this corridor that door is still open to where one of the guards is still on that platform so, you done um, chaos down there so do we need to be careful of anything? Maybe the woman at the desk. She always bit my head off on the radio. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, we're all done. Come then. And he sort of just makes a way for you to walk onto the platform. And it starts to drop down. And he's sort of humming to himself. He's not overly bothered by you being here <laughs> as it goes lower and lower and he sort of hums to himself um so what do you make of all this i'm really glad you all have some backup power systems for the detention block yeah that's we great keep recharging them we're powering through them like anything yeah so are there a lot of people that end up in the otc detention block uh no actually there's only three out there right now Hmm, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't stop looking at Vree. <laughs> no, me neither. Man, I wonder what you have to do to get locked up with the OTC. You probably have to, um, you know, move some money on ledgers or something like that. Put some favors in the wrong column. They normally just keep them there because of information. Apparently. Like, like what kind of favors they put in the wrong column? 
that kind of thing, I, where they hid their notes. I don't know, mate. I'm a god. I mean, because my mom, she's there because she's like a scientist. I mean, I don't know what she's other people would do. She's pretty smart. She's pretty smart, and like, um, you can see, um, a small like scar running down the side of his chin. He went. She tried to get out. Um. Did she? To you, with the. She did that. Yeah. I just looked the wrong way. One second. Wow. Um, I'm really sorry about my mom. You didn't do I it. I thought she No, I thought she was up there for like, you know, business stuff. Well, kind of, but people don't take too kindly to being put in what put in one of those. Yeah. So the others are they scientists too? Yeah. Seem to be. I don't know, I'm not really allowed to talk to them. I just I should have put them up there. It's not regular for people to get attacked going up there, right? No. Because we didn't really plan that. No. In fact, your first visitor in months. Hmm. Did someone visit Miss Chen before us? Ah, uh, and he just sort of does this long sort of, sort of, what I'm going to call a thinking noise. And he sort of stands there, pauses. I want to say no. No, there was one woman once. One woman came and said hi. Uh, sister or something. Mm. Did you happen to catch a name? I mean, you scan these people, right? Well. Yeah, 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 I scan them. I scan them all the time. Um, something, uh, da, 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 da. sister that also was her, um, oh, what are they called? Psychologist. Something like that. You know, we get people to come in and study them. But. Uh. Yeah, uh, of course. Is is it? Well, I guess you know they're quite handy because they're masterminds up there. Not quite like me. You need, uh, you know, clever people to understand clever people. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're all so clever. Yeah, she probably didn't get to keep her old psychologist for being in. Jail, they wouldn't let her do that, right? It wasn't Dr. Turner. I don't know. I don't know the name. This mm. was ages ago. Yeah. What cats are doing on this stream right now? <laughs> it's just, it's got, everyone has cats doing Don't be a little dummy. <laughs> oh, the difference is, here's my thing. So I can see what the Zoom chat is saying, and I can see Bree's face when she makes faces. But the difference between what Renee wants to ask and what JD wants to ask are two very different things. And, I'm, and that's why I stay muted, but I can't, like, for some things I can just type it, like, in caps in the chat, like, please fucking do this. But, like, sometimes I just get overwhelmed and I can't help but screech. Scared. Cats are probably scared neighbors. I'm surprised I haven't had like a noise complaint. Like, <laughs> um, we're just here for a wellness check. Is someone dying in here? Because someone is screaming. Yeah, Artie is at the peak of his stealthy spy capabilities right here, asking these spy. very sideways questions. This is as good as it gets. Good. Yeah, I'm so impressed. JD is just like, mm -hmm. except Renee wants to ask all of these things. And like, JD is much better at talking than I am, apparently. <laughs> So that is tricky. And this guard just sort of smiles at all of you. Like, he, this is probably the first conversation, like, chat he's had in a while. He's like, well, nearly there. Um, do we yeah. have to sign out or do anything on our way out? Uh, yeah, just go to the front desk and say something. I don't know what she's doing now. The systems are down, but I'd track mm -hmm. her anyway. 
We'll do... And with Artie behaving like this, if anything, Soren hasn't stopped watching him. Probably more out of confusion. I'm just so glad we didn't bring Coil. It's going to have been de-escalated so long ago. I am just so impressed with Artie right now. I think maybe one of the reasons JD isn't saying much is because she's just also watching Artie do this and be like, <laughs> both like, <laughs> just watching from either side. So Artie's secret is he's figured out people at the OTC expect nothing from him whatsoever. And as long as he just keeps asking questions, everybody acts like he's just a totally clueless dope. And he's just... He's figured out he's not totally clueless. Yeah. <laughs> We've always believed in you. <laughs> That's actually what's carrying Artie through all this is, you know, the very touching speeches by all of his friends. He's like, I got to step this up a little bit because people don't know what's going on here. It's like, this is really super crazy. We're just your moral support. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm your emotional support pistol. <laughs> and soon this, this sort of lift elevator type thing comes to a stop, like a bit more of a jolt, it's not as smooth as the other ones, you're like, what? Okay, there we go. And the door opens, and you're back at the top level of the stairs where you can walk back down into the main area. It's like, you know the way out, right? I mean, I can take you. No, um, I've been to that front desk a lot. Okay. And he just sort of like gives you almost like a half wave. He's like, bye. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Be careful. Yeah, thanks. And you. Like, and he sort of looks quite cheery about all of this. And Soren looks at him and says, watching both of you. Take care of yourself. And turns and just walks out onto the steps. <sighs> I mean, that's good. We got to remember that none of these people are the ones that are setting off terrible viruses and killing everybody in the city. These are just the people doing their jobs. Um, I also don't I'm, talk about things because they don't know they know things. Yeah, guys, um, I, I really appreciate all the help because it's helping me keep focused. I know how to get, like, you know, I, I talked about how I'm not supposed to have snacks and stuff like that. I know how to get something like a little bit around here if I need to, because everybody knows my mom is terrible and that I just, you know, I don't get a lot of opportunities to play or do anything like that. I'm going to see if when we check out, we can maybe get a look at these papers. So I'm going up to that desk. Up to the desk. And that woman say like, yes, oh, it's you. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, 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 are you signing out? We were going to do that, yeah. How do we do that with no power? Good old fashioned, like, and you just see what looks like this very old, duffed up, like a pen and a piece of paper. It's like, this is how we're doing it. If you can just oh. sign, each of you just sign. And put just no, like, complication or anything, just to say it was satisfactory. You want us to just circle the five where it says satisfied? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, very satisfied. Um, yeah. So first thing, Artie is actually going to look at this paper and see if there's any other names on it. Uh, there are no other names on this. You can see um, your name has been scribbled down in a hurry by this person. Um, these are literally just... It's just paper. So this is what I'm going to try to do while I am writing Artie Chen. Um, I'm going to take a look at the papers that are all over this desk, and I just want to see if anything catches my eye, is looking like it might be of high interest. And if so, I'm going to make a big mess with all these papers by knocking them on the ground. OK, roll me an intellect check, please. All right, this is possible. This is something I might be able to do. <laughs> I'm clearly applying effort to this, because this is important. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, all right. My pool is getting low. I should eventually do something about that. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can sort of almost like ask questions and things like that sort of to distract or whilst you're looking. Soren sort of notices what you're doing and leans over the counter to sort of just be I can try fix your tablet and starts just reaching over the side of this part, sort of 
the woman doesn't seem upset by it she's just like oh okay and you can see a load of printout of people that have visited the otc this most of it looks pretty standard um and you notice they have also updated it with photos which is something you never really had when the otc was run when you were here um but you see picture after picture and this is a stack as Sorin is sort of leaning over and distracting this person you can you can see a list of visitors to the upper levels that you've been on and over the last maybe year thing um you can see two have visited. One of them is a psychologist, and the other one is a psychologist. Two completely different people. Do these people have names? Uh, they do. One of them is a, where I wrote it down, because, you know, is a James Carraway, and then there is a female called Lily Caladis. That Dr. Turner reference that already threw out earlier, that was the name of the principal at the OTC High School. That was the best he could do at the time. So, okay. Um, okay, so that's good. I have locked that away in my mental vault. And I will say, okay. Um, yeah, unless you want any help with electronics because Soren and GD are like the best at fixing everything. Soren immediately recoils back over the desk. He's like, there is nothing. Thing I can do with this tablet. Thank you. Have a good day and starts walking out of the OTC. I take back everything I said and it was nice seeing you again. Bye now. <laughs> Vestal, I'm assuming you're just following silently. I am. Vestal there. Vestal's yeah. still upset about like the comment you. at the end of Artie's mom being so mean. <laughs> She's like, in that, in that, like, point of, like, kind of, like, angry and just visually, like, face upset and, like, how dare you? I like this person. <laughs> she was going to kill you all last year. She could have tried. Uh, I mean, that's fair. Soren sort of notices this. And she walks over to Vestal. I am trying to understand emotions. Which one is this? This is uh, frustration mixed with a little bit of anger. Thank you for asking. And sorry, I, I didn't mean that came off short. It's it's okay, Vestal, and a hand goes on your shoulder as well, like very plainly, as it's almost like her automatic reaction now. It's like, why are you frustrated and angry? Frankly, I didn't really think that Artie deserved being treated like that, especially by his own, his family. No. Oh, really? He didn't. I was going to say, I felt like that went really, really well. And there's a Artie. slight tinniness to Soren's voice. It's like, no, he did not. But, I mean, I talked to my mom and said something that was not her opinion, and she listened. She threatened no one's life. Um, I didn't even know she owned casual clothing. And then she was actually rather helpful. That's... I mean, most of those are in incredibly low base for doing better. Yes, I agree. Line. Yes. That's the most progress I have ever made talking to my mother is what I'm saying. I'm I actually want to get back last year with the not getting killed in the spaceship was better. But this was close. I mean, I'm happy you're happy about it but I'm still upset myself. I mean, she's a villain. <laughs> Soren looks at Artie. I don't like her. 
No, I don't like her either. She tried to kill a lot of people. But she's still my mom. You said that you might go back. Yeah, I might, I might go back, right. I mean, she's still my mom. Here's the thing, Artie. I'm not proud of her. She hasn't done great things, but you have. And if you're in a place where you can comfortably go back and see her, then I'm proud of you. I mean, I told her what I was thinking, like, right away. Yeah. I mean, I felt like that was pretty good. Yeah, you stood up for yourself and Soren. I mean, I could have done better on that, but it was, you know. You did pretty good. Yeah, so, you know. Thank you. I did not expect that. Um, I don't really want to spend a lot of time with her. I would much rather spend time with you. And it was, you know, she was wrong. She was. I still don't like her. <laughs> That's okay, you don't... Yeah. I mean, we can't all have JD's mom. I mean, True. mom or not. <laughs> Mother or not, if anyone, I mean, talked to you like that, I'd probably be upset, so. We are lucky Hoyle was not here. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were so many times that would have gone very, very badly. Correct. And we are actually going to hop gone. over. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> we're going to hop over to the lovely Coil and Dot right now. As you stand not far from, you can just see this guard sort of stood there. He doesn't, like, he's paying attention and he's looking around. He doesn't seem too bothered if you're not hiding, if you're out in the open. He doesn't seem too bothered by it. It's kind of like, he's guiding the door. That's what he's going to do. That's just going to lean against the wall and kind of just cross her arms. Put one leg up on the side of the wall and just look at Coil. And just kind of stare at her for a while because, god, this is one strange and exciting robot. Because if we don't... I, I believe in the first season... Handling Soren was not Dot's easiest thing at first. Um, handling anyone new is not easy. Uh, she was shook as shit by Soren, um, shook as shit by uh, Vestal's, uh, you know, magic and shit. Um, she doesn't handle new things well, so she's to process it for a while. Um, I, I'm just staring back at you. <laughs> Oh but I, but I, I guess I'm not really staring. I'm just my faceplate is just pointed at you. Is it is it a blank faceplate or do you have a face on there? I have my neutral face, <laughs> which is um, my neutral face is like the up the eyes that are up, and the like little smile. Okay, my neutral face. <laughs> and you both stand here for a while, and the guard has noticed. That's literally just what you lot are all doing. He's like, um, everything okay? Huh? Oh yeah, things are great. Um, I just made friends with a robot and I'm just, I don't know. I don't know how to get, do you have friends with robots, sir? Are you friends with any robots? Um, I, yeah, one. There's a, there's the, my brother has a live-in one, um, but we don't normally stare at each other like that across, you know, the room or anything. Hmm. So what do you do with your robot companion, sir? <laughs> what does your robot do? Where does it live? <laughs> what does your robot do? They're just there. They're my friend. They're your friend, the robots. Yeah. What kind of robot are they? What is their function and designation? Uh, well, my brother originally uh, got him because he washes the dishes. Hmm. Cool. Dot? Do you know how to wash? Have I ever washed dishes? I don't think so. 
I don't think you ever will. That's fine. That's fine. You don't need to know how to wash dishes. Soren can wash dishes pretty well. You can do other good things. <laughs> oh, Zelda in chat. <laughs> Fuck. Paddles for dishes. He's <laughs> gonna buff him out. <laughs> and this guy says, well, well, they don't just wash the dishes. Like, you know, they're more than that. Yeah. We have a friend who is more than that with a robot as well. What? <laughs> I, I... Kyle! Dot just starts laughing. Just super loud. Uh, I, I, I don't know what you mean. We have a friend who's friendly with a robot. You do the eyebrow wiggle. <laughs> Dot, Dot lets her guard down around Coil because Coil's a killing machine. She doesn't have a reason to have her like guard up. She she doesn't have to be anything more than just a regular person around Coil. Oh, okay. There are many tears to friendship. Sometimes friends stay with you, and sometimes they do the dishes, and sometimes they protect you. Okay. Like just looking for both of you. Like, what's what's your name, friend? Come come hang out with us. I mean, don't go too far from the door. I don't want you to get in trouble. But what's your name, my friend? I'm, I'm Chris. Chris. Well, it's nice to meet you, Chris. Hi. Uh, what are your names? Well, I'm Destiny. She looks at Coil with like a very serious face. Oh, hi, hi, uh. Destiny. I don't know that Coil. I don't know that I would know that we're supposed to be lying. You, she just doesn't want you to correct her. She just wants you to go with, my name is Destiny. <laughs> A little bit of static flashes across my faceplate. And I say, I am Spring. <laughs> Hi, Spring. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just Chris. I, 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 I guard, you know, I'm, I'm a guard. What, what's, what's your function then, Spring? Spring is a uh, emotional support companion. Oh, and I'm I can run very fast. Very fast. Wow. So like, if you're in trouble sort of thing, need that support, they get there real quick. Are you in trouble, Chris? No, no, I think we're just fine, Spring. It's okay. We don't need to do it. We don't need to go into the therapy right now. It's okay. I, I, I'm fine, but thanks for asking. So, yeah. But <gasps> like my brother's robot's kind of like that as well. They're really good to chat to. Yeah. Do you all live in the OTC, or do you just work for the OTC? Oh god, I couldn't afford something here. I don't live here. I live, uh, about three blocks that way. Yeah, this place is crazy expensive. I have a- I have a friend who stayed here for a while with his family, and it's just obscene. But I heard there was a big thing that happened last year. Crazy. Oh yeah, no, I heard about that. I sort of got employed when the new guys came in, like when the you know the big lot came in and bought it up. Um, I know there was that like illness going around, which was crazy. My brother got it. Um, it's actually when um, the robot started becoming more of a carer as well. Um, but he's okay now. He's all good. He's all good. Um, I was lucky enough. I didn't. I didn't catch it. I didn't. That's good. I'm so glad. I. You know, oh, I'm glad that the cure came out when it did. Yeah. I actually, uh, I caught it too, so. Oh, wow, really? Mm-hmm. It was... I'm sorry, but you're here, so, you know. That's true. You, you can't complain about being on this side of Eden. Yeah. Like, I mean, did, I'm assuming spring helped you through it. <laughs> Oh, of course. Spring has helped a lot of people through a lot of things. That's awesome. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. And hmm. you see Chris just almost like relax a little bit, again leaning against the door. 
<laughs> it's just sort of like, huh, that, 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 that's quite cool. And why, why are you hanging around here? Chris, what oh. is your brother's name? Paul. Why? Is Paul okay? Now? <laughs> Paul is fine. <laughs> why? It makes me upset to hear that people get sick. As a robot, I do not experience illness, and it fascinates me that you all are so squishy and so easily riddled with infectious disease. It is well, saddening. I, I, I mean, we're not, you know, we, we've got the stuff at the hospital and stuff. We get rid of pretty much anything quite quickly. It's just, the, last year was a weird one. I don't really know what happened, but my Paul's fine. Paul is fine. I am very glad to hear that, Chris. Thanks, Spring. <laughs> I'm going to take it one step closer to him. Chris, I am very happy that Paul is okay, and I hope that that sickness never comes back. It was very bad. Yeah, it was. It was, it was real bad. I am sorry that he was sick. You don't need to be sorry about that, Spring. Spring, it's okay. It wasn't anyone's fault. It was just a new cold that seemed to have gotten into the system of things. Don't worry about it. You don't have to apologize to our friend Chris here. There's another, like, flash of static, and then my face returns to my neutral, happy face. Of course, I just was responding to my protocol. I felt that Chris needed some emotional support. Of course, I had nothing to do with it, and sickness is a normal part of your human life. Like I said, you are easily infiltrated by millions of bacteria and viruses on a daily basis. It's a wonder that you aren't sick all of the time. You are very gross. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you're not wrong. Thank I'm gonna take a step back and step closer to that dot. dot. Dot will put like a friendly arm, like above where the paddles are, just to be safe. So she, like, she'll just like give her a pat. Like, yeah, we were waiting on a, some noodles uh, to be delivered. We were supposed to meet some friends and they were gonna bring noodles, but they're taking a, a long time. Hmm. Probably the blackout. There's this great guy that sells noodles. I don't know if you've ever had it, but he pulls up along here sometimes and he'll so good. Oh, I just love noodles. Also, this blackout is insane. What? I don't... I don't know. I just saw this weird message on the screen and everything started to shut down. It was weird. It didn't make any sense. Mm -mm. wonder who that face was. Oh, I don't recognize him. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? It's probably just a hacker having a laugh and... I mean, I don't... I didn't think anyone would be... I didn't think anyone would go and knock out all the generators and everything, but... That's true. You know, my dad works for the generator company, but he never tells me where to, where it is. I, I, I should... I should call him and see if I get to the generators, but maybe see what the he's generator up to. Generator company. <laughs> generator company. Dot is, Dot is a terrible, great liar. She's just like fucking making shit up at the top of her head. Well, we have our own backup generators, so I can't help you there. Yeah. No TC's got power in more oh, ways just than about. one. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah, though apparently it's chaos in there right now. All the computers have shut down, and I had the woman at the front desk is not happy. All of the computers have shut down. That's not good. No, it's really not. But then, hopefully, the lights are going to come back up soon. And almost as if he says that, you hear D -d 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 as things start to power up. It's almost like they flick on all over the city it sort of goes block by block and you can see neon lights turn on and the housing starts to turn on. You can hear a couple of people almost cheer, like out of relief. And he's like, there we go. And he sort of switches off this torch. 
Thank God. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. I should probably go call my friends and see if they can make their way now that everything's back on. It was so nice to meet you, Chris. Yeah, and you too. It was it was nice. And and you, Spring. It was nice to see you. All right. Spring, do you want to go to the front and see if, with the lights back on, if our friends meet us here? Yes, of course. Destiny. But did you say your name was again? I totally yeah, forgot. Destiny. Okay. That just picks like the randomest, like the most random D names. Yes, Destiny. I I will follow you. All right. And she's gonna bring Coil to the front and be like, "I'm really sorry. I just didn't know what to say." And there was a person there. You did great. You did a great job. We should warn him and tell him to get below the city. We can't do that. But his brother was already sick. We don't know what kind of lasting impact it could have. Perhaps the rain, you are also afraid of it. It is dangerous. It it may activate some of the, the latent virus in him or, or whatever it was. We should tell him to go beneath the city, take his brother. You realize, Coil, that would mean I will also die because I had the cold. Then you should go beneath the city as well. No. If I if I go and hide, I won't be here to take care of my friends. If you die, you won't be able to protect care of your friends either. Sometimes well, hiding is just surviving. There's never enough time. Coil. Never enough time to hide. That's not in any of our destinies. And besides, if we tell Chris that we know something, the last time I was friendly with a random passerby, it ended up being Adam Watson. The last time I warned someone, it was Adam Watson. What is and destiny? What? I'm sorry? What is destiny? You said it is not in our destinies. What is destiny? Destiny is a concept. Um, for example, um, when that when I went back in time from the person from the future, when we went and did that together, so I could imprint on you, that was destiny. It was meant to happen, so it was made to happen. Can bad things be destiny? Bad things are meant to happen and so they happen. Maybe, but if there's enough good people to stop it, there can always be hope. I still think that you should go beneath the city into the ship. But if you will not do that, then I will stay up here with you. Coil. Why did you get so apologetic to Chris? It is sad when humans get sick. You're riddled with viruses. It's alarming. Is it just, is that the only reason? You mentioned something about a cold when I first met you. It was very traumatizing to all of you. It was something that JD couldn't talk about. Maybe other people have the same reactions to it. It makes me sad that people feel that way. Yeah. Fortunately for most people, like Chris, they don't they don't know the truth behind everything. That's why if we warn him, it might make things worse. It's better for him to think it's an accident that there's no control over than to know a sadist 
is out trying to kill him and his family off. In some cases, it is best to not tell the truth. It's considered omission, which is lying, but not as bad. We are not telling Chris because the truth is too upsetting. We are protecting him. And if we work very hard, we can stop the problem before Chris ever has to worry. That makes sense. I understand that thought process. Lying to protect can be good. And it's not something that we need to feel guilty about. I feel like I just said something to you that is going to bite me in the ass in the future, Coyle. I do not know what that means. I am simply learning. I know, and I'm a Although you are riddled with viruses and animals that eat your skin, you are also riddled with wisdom. Well, I have one more piece of wisdom. And though we sometimes have to lie to other people to protect them and ourselves, when it comes to your friends, you can always be honest with us because we are there for you. Thank you, Dot. You're welcome, Coil. I'm still super weirded out by the robot thing. I'm so sorry. I don't know if you're happy with me or if I did something right or if I did something wrong. And I don't know if I just taught you something that's going to fuck up everything in like 30 minutes for you. And it's scary. You're like, you're like a killing machine, but also a baby in one box. And it's terrifying to me. I am not like a baby or a killing machine. I do not kill. I only deescalate. And before that, my function was to educate. There is a lot of confusing and conflicting protocol within my software. Well, that sounds pretty human, so that that helps. I just, I don't want to do anything too fucked up. I don't want to disappoint Crowbar. I don't remember much of Crowbar. Sometimes she would turn me on and say things to me. And I think she put pieces of herself inside who I have become. But I think she was a difficult person to disappoint. That was a very nice thing. You said, Coil, maybe you are an emotional support robot. I have provided much emotional support in the coming days. That is true, you have. You also saved our asses a few times, which I do appreciate. Rebecca, yes. Um, that's not entirely the one I meant. I was more thinking- I've never forgotten Rebecca. She was the first criminal that I have <laughs> taken down in the company of you, my friend slash crime fighters. Rebecca's reign came to an end that day. And then Vestal hit her in the face with the screen. <laughs> okay. I still have to have a talk with both of you about that. And I'm gonna wait till you both are together so I can have a very serious talk with you about that. Because I know you did it because you thought she was a villain. And I'm quite sure Vestal did it because, you know, that's a good question. I'll have to ask her because I don't know why she did that thing. Speaking of Vestal and our friends, how long has it been? Do you think they're okay? How long has it been, Alice? It's probably been about an hour, roughly. Uh, 
Yeah, you're right. It has been a long time. Um, I'll call them because I don't want to go in there. I hate when they scan me. It pisses me off. I'll call Vestal. And Vestal, you get a call as you're sort of just exiting the building. Oh, oh. I'll answer. Is something wrong? Oh, no, I'm s I, no, I'm watching you literally walk out of the OTC right now. I just thought you guys might have been killed or maimed or forgot to uh, update me. Oh, no. Uh, just a talk took a little bit longer and we had to do like some extra stuff because of the power going out. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Um, and, and she, and she's talking like, kind of like, uh, yeah, as she, as she approaches the party, like still on the phone, she's like, uh, well, I'm just gonna, and she hangs up. Yeah. I'll turn mine off. <laughs> so, uh, did your mom talk that much? Actually, she she actually talked a lot for her. Um, Wait, yeah, yeah, no, it was actually kind of helpful and also very insulting. Yep. Yeah, your mom is a bitch. Yep, it's true. Can confirm. I don't have to really say anything because it's covered. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no walking walk. So, do you remember your crazy theory about the idea that all the weather we were experiencing was actual weather that exists on a planet? And the, the things that we experience are very mild versions of that. You were totally right. Um, that's what my mom said exactly is happening. And apparently there's some sort of secondary electronic virus that's destroying or harming the spaceship that is Eden. And we're all actually just in a spaceship right now. The spaceship is alive and it is growing into the city. And the virus, similar to a plant, I think. I'm not great on the herbalism. Um, it's sick like the cold and it's dying now that's that's what i'm picking up yeah um i um, imagine you're right i also know nothing about plants vestal you're the only person i know who can keep a plant alive uh i'm actually not great with plants they tend to die i i think it's i just forget about them time is weird and i leave them too long how do we keep I thought there was a plant in the apartment that was alive still. Okay. Uh, probably I, not by now. I, I water them. Oh. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I did a whole ass cat jump on my laptop on everything, step on my microphone, knock over my... <laughs> um, so apparently Soren is the only one who knows anything about plants around here. Okay, cool. Um, I researched yes. it. I actually am not at all surprised. Um, very neat. Yeah. So the OTC knows who Dawn is and at one point had her locked up and then she escaped and apparently she escapes frequently and Telemachus keeps locking her up all over the place and my mom is telling me that we need to go to the edge. We need to actually find the edge of Eden and that's supposedly where Dawn is locked up. And, um, yeah, if we get there, the, she thinks that's where we're going to find Adam. Then oh. that is where we go to find Adam. I, I do think we need to do that. I also was thinking, since we're right here, we need to go upstairs of the apartment and see if Telemachus is there. I actually really agree with that. I, we don't have a ton of leads, and while we're here... We should. Yeah, and the edge is vague. I, we don't actually have any instructions on how to get there. Oh, yeah. and um, Soren still has a noodles. Oh, I Soren do. still has noodles. Soren has noodles. Noodle break? Please. Maybe at the apartment? Maybe at the apartment? Hmm? I mean, unless Where you want to use from the back of the OTC. I mean, might as well well check on there's a guy Kevin. standing right there i don't know what we do with that what what's wrong there's just some guy standing right there i mean oh, do we just sit great. back here and <laughs> okay. do we oh, just like i'm <laughs> just fine, gonna fine. stand um, back here and eat noodles he's that's fine. fine um looks at you and it's like chris come eat noodles with us 
We have extras. They brought the noodles. You can share mine. I did not. Do, we don't have extra, do we, Sorry. It, we can, can share mine. mine noodles. I don't really. <laughs> yeah, see? We can <laughs> go in. Uh, How are you both into Chris? <laughs> Paul Coil Spring, Call Me Destiny. It's a thing. Don't worry what? about it. Uh, did you actually get any of those? Did you eat those oh, horrible protein bars from the, from the clinic? Again? Like, and Chris sort of is like, I can't leave the door. Chris, I'm going to walk over there and I'll say, Chris, I, I'll stand by the door here while you go and eat the noodles. Um, You'll still be able to see me, but I will be here at the door. It, it It's okay. I've, I've really got to stand here. I can't lose my job. I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at, um, Chris with this face. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. He's like, Coyle, why don't you just, why don't you just share your noodles with Chris? Wait, if this is the problem, can we just go eat the noodles over by Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like, oh, are these your friends? Yeah. Hey, Destiny. <laughs> are we doing that thing where we don't give our real name? It's fine. I just I can't help myself. So Hi, I'm Marty Chen. JD. It's nice to meet you. Hi, Chris. Hi, I'm JD. Chris, nice to meet you. Nice yes. to meet you too. Hi. Um. So, uh, how, how how do you all know Destiny and Spring? Roommates. Do you want noodles? I mean. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, we got a lot of noodles. Same, right? So much has been going on. And JD just starts like unpackaging noodles and handing them out. Yeah, Soren um, basically opens up just part of this compartment. And you see hot, like, air, like steam come out. Just, like, <laughs> I kept them warm and starts handing them Thank to JD. You, Soren. <laughs> JD distributes them. Oh, uh, extra veggies. Is this your friend that's more than a friend with a robot? Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris. Artie, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Artie. And who's this? And points at Soren, who's just handing noodles out to JD. That's Soren. She's the reason the noodles are still warm. She's pretty amazing. Oh. Okay. She is not a walking watch. <laughs> what? I I didn't say that. No, no, you didn't. Um, I'm gonna start backing up towards the door. <laughs> well, Chris is distracted with noodles. <laughs> okay, you do the speed check to see if you actually manage to stop. I'm so fast. <laughs> it's a matter of your thoughts as if he sees you. you gotta go fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I want a high speed or a slow speed? Am what I trying to move slowly? I don't know. What are you trying to do? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Are you trying to like sneak up around? I can't tell what angle. Like the shimmy over by the wall to get. I just want to like kind of like start to walk backwards. <laughs> are you trying to get closer to Chris or closer to the door? No, I'm trying to. I'm between Chris and the door because Chris is now eating noodles, and so I would like to step behind Chris and then back up towards the door. Can you roll me a speed check then, please? Um, I would like to spend, can, do I, can I spend an edge? What does that let me do if I do that? <laughs> it's okay, it makes it easier. So yes, you have beaten it. You can okay. get to the door whilst, at the moment, Chris seems to be talking to Artie and eating noodles. <laughs> so, do a lot of people come by this door? Uh, no. No, it's just a maintenance entrance. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The noodles are good. Yeah, they're really good, actually. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, like, yeah. Pretty good. Is the door unlocked if I put my hand on it? Yeah, the door is unlocked. 
I would like to push the door open and slide in and then like help it close so it doesn't click. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Okay, I'm in. Ho- I like stand, I like, is it like a see-through door? No, it's literally just a door. And you are in a maintenance room and you can see mop buckets and you can see just general maintenance somewhere. Lots of like wires and stuff like that look like they'd be back up for computers and stuff like that. Is there, is there another door? There is. Is that one glass? Uh, no, this is again just a normal door. <laughs> this is the future! <laughs> I cannot stress how much this is a maintenance closet. <laughs> okay, I, I'm i gonna open the door a little bit and press my face plate against the crack. <laughs> just if anyone walks past get the fright of their life. Um, you can <laughs> see the main uh, hallway for the OTC and a desk where a woman looks very sort of panicked throwing papers about. Is she looking at me? No, she's definitely looking at the papers. Is there anyone else in here? What in the in the room? Yeah, but I mean besides her, is there anyone oh, else? Oh yeah, in no, the there's hall? loads of people. You can see lots of people moving generators and stuff like that. I know you like to like de-escalate like PAs. <laughs> <laughs> the least trusted position in the hierarchy of building work. <laughs> Oh my god, a receptionist! <laughs> she knows too much! <laughs> she has too many files! <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Are there- are there any, um, like, janitor outfits in here? Yes, there are. <laughs> to put one on. <laughs> you can do that. I'm gonna put on a janitor outfit, and I'm gonna grab a mop, and then I'm gonna walk out. You can do that, because I want to see where this goes. <laughs> I like to think that Crowbar has, inst- even though I don't know it, she has definitely instilled, like, really unnecessary, like, sneaking <laughs> protocol. I have a Sherlock Holmes gene in me. Um, I'm going to walk out, and then I'm just going to walk like away from the main. So I'm going to come out of the maintenance closet and walk a- away from the main entrance, like <laughs> deeper into the building. Yeah, you can do that. Now you can see um, the garden, the other side. Um, as I said, you can see lots of people sort of bustling and rushing around and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, there's the stairs. Okay. I go up the stairs. <laughs> And you see a man stood there, um, now turning off like this torch thing, and he's like, Oh! Uh, they've already cleaned up here. I'm here to clean again. Do you think that you are perfect at cleaning? And you have missed no spots? You can guarantee that? Your job feels secure, saying that everything is perfectly clean? I'm the guard. Then you really don't know what you are talking about. I don't. I don't claim that. That's George's job. George sent me. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Well, it's just this corridor, so feel free. I'm gonna put the the mop part on the ground and just push it down the hall as I keep walking. It's just the length of the hallway and back. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more doors? What kind of building is this? <laughs> you can see where all the elevators have say like um, out of power, shut down, like they've been sort of shut off other than the one that the others went up earlier. Okay which is right by the guard. Um, I'll go to the one that's furthest away from the guard and pry it open. Yeah, roll me a might check, please. I'm strong. I have strength. I have strength. I am strong. I am strong. I have strength. George, send Um, me. wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait. I have a mop and it's really thrown off my... 
Do I have any rerolls? <laughs> you have a reroll and also a nat one, nat twenty die. I'm gonna reroll. Okay. You pry it open. And I'm gonna climb up the elevator shaft like in a spy movie. I need you to roll another mic then, please. <laughs> yeah. You start climbing. And you can see a series of doors as you hit, like, again, almost like elevator like doors as you climb up each level. Um, I'm gonna call Dot on the phone. <laughs> and I'm just chat I'm just chit chatting with Chris out here. Yeah, Chris is just like really happy that he's got some company. <laughs> be like, uh uh. She's gonna look around as her phone rings. Be like, excuse me, I have to take this call real quick. And she's like jogs towards the corridor and answers and goes, When the fuck did you get away from us? And where the fuck did you go? <laughs> what floor is the apartment on? I'm sorry, did you? Did you go behind the door? You're gonna get Chris fired. <laughs> the door was unlocked. Chris is not very good at his job. <laughs> what floor is the apartment on? Which apartment are you talking about? I don't know what apartment are we talking about. What apartment are we looking for? I don't know. You guys said there was an apartment, so I'm gonna go to the apartment. You're talking about our apartment, where we live. Yes. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Wrong building, Coyo. Wrong building. <laughs> Well, don't stop now. Just start stealing stuff. Just de escalate everyone you see. Oh Are you Commit, in OTC Coyle. apartments Commit. right now, Coil? Are you in the OTC apartments right now, Coil? Yes, I'm in the elevator shaft. Fuck me sideways. Oh. Okay. You know what? We'll make this a useful journey. Uh, what floor? I'm sure Dot would remember because she's got a lightning memory for dumb shit. But uh, where was uh, Artie's mom's apartment? It was quite high up. I think it was level 63, something like that. So either go to the 63rd floor or come straight back outside <laughs> right now. And to I can't believe you climbed the wrong building. <laughs> Like to Artie's old place or something in the <laughs> Well, Chris so is looking around like, is everything all right? Yeah, it's fine. It's my mom. Oh, okay. Just so you all know, I like when I play this game, I like um, pull on my ear thing <laughs> and I totally have pulled it off <laughs> this session <laughs> because I'm just like so nervous. And now I just climbed the wrong building. <laughs> Like really well as well. You put on a yeah, you did it so well. You had the mop stealth mood. You we were going home. Why were you? You slated George, and you went up <laughs> with the shops. Um, I'm okay. I'm gonna go to the 60th floor then, if I can. I guess the 63rd specifically, not the 63rd. <laughs> I'm gonna go you to the 63rd floor. You can go up to the 63rd floor. Dot, what, once I'm on the 63rd floor, what door is it? It is door... And it, hell, this is broken. So I, I don't even listen. know! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that! <laughs> we, we assume Dot knows. <laughs> Dot gives her the apartment number that requires. Okay, I'm gonna climb to the 63rd floor and then I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna go to that apartment. <laughs> You can open the elevator door to another corridor where there's lots of doors. Great. Do, are they numbered? Yes, they are numbered. I go to the the, the right number. <laughs> the door is there. What do you do? Um, I knock. The door opens. I hit the person. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm changing it from a child answering the door now. <laughs> <laughs> no! As <laughs> this huge guy answers the door. <laughs> Can you roll me a mic check, please? Okay. 
<clears throat> My god, yeah, she punched <laughs> this guy in the face. <laughs> I paddle him. <laughs> and he drops <laughs> to the floor. And you see a mother and child sat at the table. <laughs> lunch or dinner like and the mother quickly grabs the child and backs up towards the um to like where the the wall is and puts herself in front of the child so, what, 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 what do you want what do you want i am doing a routine oh my gosh ow <laughs> 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 my cat just bit my butt <laughs> fucking a karma <laughs> That's for climate. She's just like, why did you climb She's the wrong? I'm happy about what's happening. <laughs> I don't think anyone is. <laughs> I am here to search the apartment. I will not harm you, but there is necessary information. <laughs> I I panicked. It's been a long time since I I started climbing that elevator shaft. Dot is still on the line with. Coil, Coil, what did you just do? Is there someone there? Turn around, come down here right now. And you can hear a woman on the other end that she goes, what do you want, what do you, what do you mean you're not here to hurt anyone? Look at my husband. Coil, turn around and leave. <laughs> Apologize there, and leave. But there are things in this apartment that we need. Do you still have the mop? <laughs> <laughs> the most violent janitor. <laughs> I came to mop your room. How long have you lived in this apartment? Um, we, we moved in like three months ago. And who lived here before you? I don't know. Look, Ask them, them if there was anything left in the apartment. Was there anything left in the apartment when you moved in? No. No, I, th I, th I, th I think we got the table for free. Hello, readers. The table. <laughs> The table was in the apartment. Okay, then turn the up for one. Do not punch people, no matter how nervous you get. Apologize to the woman for punching her husband. And you can hear this. Oh, <laughs> as the man sort of rolls on the floor. I want to go over to the table and flip it over. Don't touch the table. <laughs> you flip the table. <laughs> and get Don, out. On the other end, you hear this woman and child scream. <laughs> Coil. Um, listen, Coil. Listen to my soft, sweet voice. If you do not come back down the elevator shaft and come outside, so help me God, I'm going to cover you in neon orange spray paint. Right over your faceplate. <clears throat> Dot, there could be something of interest in this apartment. Yes, we have to make sure that we know everything that we could possibly know before facing Adam. They there's another room. Listen, there's another room you can go in. Okay, what is it? And she gives the number to, uh... <laughs> Please! No one be here. Artie Chen's apartment. She gives the number for Artie's old apartment. Just to get her out of that room. That's another room of high interest. Please go there. Apologize. Is it on the same floor? I think so. It's just down the- just down the hall. Um, no, please apologize to the woman. I am gonna put the table back. And, and, and like pressed against the wall. Anything that was on the table, I'm gonna put back on the table. There's dinner. And and then I'm gonna kind of rub the mop on the tabletop and say, <laughs> "I have done my job now. Thank thank you." And then leave. I, mean, I, dead. <laughs> I would like to stress that that was our teacher's apartment, the old apartment. Oh, then she gave the mom's apartment number then after that. She's yeah. Like, okay. Okay. She picked a different, the other apartment number just to get her the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, you can go to the other apartment and when you knock, there is no reply. I'm gonna, um, can I, I'm just gonna try the handle, like, <laughs> just to see. It opens. Yeah, nice. I'm gonna go in. <laughs> It almost looks like a show apartment, as if um, it's been done up to show people what it would look like if they bought an apartment at the OTC. It doesn't look lived in at all. Um, <clears throat> when was the last time someone lived in this apartment? Would you like to roll an intellect? 
Um, I was asking Dot, but I could also make it into like. Oh no! Yeah, if you're asking Dot, that's fine. Um, I don't know. That's. I want you just to see if there's anything. Look for a computer. Look for anything, but be quick because you know that family's gonna call the peacekeepers. You have to hurry. Okay, I look for a computer. There's... I'm just gonna say, you know what? I'm just. I'm not even like looking. I'm just gonna start trashing this place. <laughs> I'm gonna flip over the table. I'm gonna pull the couch cushions off. I'm gonna open the fridge and the oven and the microwave, all of the cabinets. I'm gonna go in the bathroom. You hear the microwave shouting at you, but that's about it. What does it say? It's literally just saying like, please, three minutes only. Three, it's like on a setting. <laughs> it's just <laughs> shouting at you. What is your name, microwave? I am microwave three five seven nine. When were you installed in this apartment? Around three months ago. Please put me down. I put the microwave down. <laughs> How many people have been in this apartment since you were installed? Zero. Have you ever been used? No. <laughs> Just saw the chat. <laughs> the comment in chat. I came to paddle dads and look suspicious in apartments and I'm all out of dads. <laughs> I legit thought that was you up until just now and I was <laughs> I am sorry for pulling you out of the wall. I was looking for something. Do you know if there is a computer in here? All computers were removed. Do you know who removed them? No. Thank you. <laughs> I want to. I want to put the microwave in a nice spot. You can put it by the window. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking out, gazing out of the window. So it's got for you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> when they come to clean this apartment, please do not tell them what happened. Okay. You know what? I'm fucking taking this microwave. <laughs> Oh my god, you've got Kevin a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I need something. I need something for this journey to be worth it. <laughs> Do you want to stay in this apartment forever? I... Do not know want. Would you like to cook food? I would. I know someone who makes lots of food. I would like to take you to them. Will I be of help? Yes. You will fulfill your purpose. You will not be a waste with these people. They will put tacos in you. <laughs> I love that that's what broke Zelda. <laughs> and so, then please. I take, I put my mop against the window and I take the, <laughs> I take the microwave instead and I leave the apartment and I'm just gonna take the stairs down. You can take the stairs down. <laughs> and you see that guard with his back to you and he's like, oh, you're d I have cleaned all the apartments. Right, I didn't know you went upstairs. This microwave needs deep cleaning. Okay. Fair enough. Do you want me to let George know? George already knows, as he sent me. He is a very good manager, and he should be promoted. He's a manager? Wow, he did get promoted. One more time, he should be promoted as well. 
I mean, I saw him this morning and it was just the cleaner. Well, he's very good at cleaning. Yeah, yes. apparently so. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Where I are you go going? <laughs> I <wanna> go <clears throat> I'm going to go out the, um, the exit, the maintenance closet exit. Mm-hmm. And Dot, you can see behind Chris, who's having this conversation. Um, are you still in the janitor's outfit? Yeah, I did take it <laughs> off. I didn't have time. And you see a microwave underneath Coyle's arm. Well, this has been such a treat. And she's going to run over and she's going to give like uh, Chris like a big hug, like He's a friendly like hug. Okay. Like, it was such a pleasure to meet you. And as she does like does this, she points to Coil and just goes, your mouth tell her to run in the opposite direction. Like, it's such a pleasure to meet you. You know, I maybe we'll come hang out again sometime. Here, take my calm information. Maybe we can hang out sometime when you're not at work. We could all get noodles. It, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, it was nice meeting all of you. He doesn't quite hug you back. He's like an awkward pat. <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> Does Coil at least listen to me though and run in the opposite direction? <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> and the rest of you can see this, basically, as Coil emerges and then legs it with a microwave in the janitor's outfit. <laughs> and Soren is looking over, looks at Dot, and looks to Artie, and looks back. We should go. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, nice to meet you, Chris. Yeah, great meeting all of thanks. you. Thanks yeah. for sharing noodles. Well, thank you. I've got to get back to my post, but this was really awesome. Maybe yeah. see you all again sometime. And he goes and just looks at the door and says, huh, and then closes it again. Did you give him your real contact information? No. <laughs> <laughs> She gave she probably gave him like the information to like a secondary com that she keeps somewhere else. And then he'll probably come back to kill all of us because she didn't call him back. <laughs> a pattern. That has a problem with turning boys into super killers. That's why she's dating women exclusively now. <laughs> what do the rest of you do as you see Coil Leggett? Soren has sort of started walking hurriedly after them. Yeah. Uh, Artie spun halfway one way holding his noodles, halfway the other way holding his noodles, turned to Chris, handed him the noodles and the chopsticks, and he's just going to start walking after yeah. Sore. Uh, okay. Thanks. And you can all leave. <laughs> leave Chris with some noodles. And you can all catch up with Coil effectively around the corner out of Chris's sight. The Chris second, isn't moving, so. The second Dot gets to her, she's why the fuck did you punch someone? And where did you get the fucking microwave, Coil, please? You punch someone? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what happened? <laughs> Coil, this is a this is a, this is a dot coil conversation right now, everyone. Coil, why did you punch that man in the face? What? I didn't I oh didn't my God. Punch him. he's he, I wasn't sure that there would be anyone there, and so I attempted to de-escalate the situation before it got out of control. It I sounded didn't like know was... how he would react. Okay, but you have to remember, though, there was also a child in that room. What would you have done if the child answered the door? Yes, Coyle, what would you have done? <laughs> My aim was intentionally for someone that was over 5'5". Five five. So it would so have had to be a very <laughs> false child. <laughs> you would have been a short bad. person. <laughs> All right, it's fine. We can't, we can't, we can't change the past. Where did you get the microwave? Ah, uh, yes, this microwave. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold the microwave up so it's facing everyone. <laughs> I found. Them. <laughs> oh, I hello. found them in Artie's mom's apartment. Okay, uh, <laughs> was that the only thing in there? Uh, it was the only thing that I did not destroy. <laughs> You know she's not staying in her apartment now, right? She is in a like a detention facility that's a different right. apartment. I'll explain. 
So, I, Coil got talking to the microwave and not listening. Coil got confused, I suppose, and decided to explore the OTC apartments um, in this outfit. So, in order to make the situation useful, I thought she should just pay a quick peek in visit to both of the old apartments, Artie's and Artie's mom, to see if anything was left behind. Artie, someone has moved into your apartment. Uh, Coil punched the father in the face and then flipped their table. Um, okay. I haven't lived there for, I lived there for about three weeks and I have not lived there for a year. I know, and... but she was, I mean, they had already gone in there, so I thought as well make it useful. I didn't know there would be anyone there to get punched. Um, then they went into the other apartment. Um, from what I heard, you had a conversation with said microwave. Yes. <clears throat> this microwave has never once been used. It was sitting there in an empty apartment where no one visits. They have never had a taco. That oh, sounds like a JD problem, man. I will hug this microwave. I thought it would be nice for the microwave to be able to fulfill its function. Its job is to warm things with science rays. And it is not able to do that when in a dark apartment that no one visits. It is a fate worse than death for robots to not be able to fulfill their function. Okay. I this is not to... a bad robot. It just has not had a chance to do good at its job. Wait, I, oh. I leveled up. Wait, wait, I finally leveled up JD. <laughs> It's so long, and I have a thing that JD is definitely going to use here as she is talking to this microwave, and it is called Charm Machine. <laughs> and if I can convince, I or I convince this microwave to like me, which is so easy to do, <laughs> and anything that it would try to do to harm me, possibly down the line, has a 50% chance of failure. So it's awesome. might not poison. Well, it I mean, might not what... blow up my mother. <laughs> what if someone just, you know, hypothetically, I... was to accidentally put a foil-covered banana into it? Does that cover that as well? Uh, I don't know. If I put the foil-covered banana in, maybe. If you do, all bets are off. That sounds right, okay. You're all so paranoid. I've even made you paranoid of microwaves. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just covering my bases. That's fine. This, this microwave adores you. Yay! <laughs> Hello, I am microwave3579. Would you like a name? What sort of name? Hmm. My other microwave friend is named Kevin. I think we'd have to pick a different name than Kevin. And a different name than Artie. Heaven knows we have enough of those. Whatever is agreeable for you. How about... 3579? 3579. I am getting suggestions. <laughs> um, our private chat has Josh. The Eden chat has uh, Joe. So, the I, I, I hear you and I see you and I so appreciate suggestions. And I'm usually all about taking them, but JD is trying to picture what letters the numbers look like, and so she's going to name this microwave Ezlo. 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 <clears throat> Ezlo. Easy Ello. Ezlo. I think yeah. I like it. Thank you. I'm glad. Let's actually, why don't you come visit your new home? Y'all, I'm so many robots today. I've adopted two robots 
today. <laughs> and are you all heading back to the apartment, the, the, the correct apartment? The correct the apartment in the right building. Hey, we can't put this, we can't put Aslo in the same apartment as Kevin. It'll have to be in the adjoining one. Maybe let's not even tell Kevin. No, we have to tell Kevin. That's not right. Um, really, what are the chances that we do not collect more robots at this point? Mm, slim to none. Coil sounded very, very committed to this course of action. <laughs> okay, well, so we should expect more robots, right? I mean... I'd say expect more robots, just to be safe. <laughs> so, are you heading back to your apartment? Yes. Yeah, you would say you can get there and you're at the front door and you can walk in and it's as you've left it. You can hear Kevin sort of buzzing away in the kitchen. You can, um, as you enter, you see Bash sort of jump off one of the window ledges and sort of come towards you and a squawk from turkey burger kevin we found you a friend a friend yes a different friend than Artie. and um jd will take the microwave if possible <laughs> take eslo over next to kevin and set them down. And you just hear this sort of beeping from both of them, just say, hello, hello, hello. And they just keep repeating and talking to each other. So cute, isn't it so cute? And then you hear Kim, I hope you like tacos. And there's just some more murmuring from Eslo. Eslo's never had a taco. We'll have to take care of that, but an actual taco, an actual one. I won't touch it, okay? I, I'm gonna learn one of these days. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hug Kevin and Eslo and then I'm gonna go back to my people. <laughs> my people. Also, where on earth did our other Wismo go? You see him stroll in behind you, looking very happy what? to himself. <laughs> child, where were you? That's its name now, child. <laughs> And you see him just, you're not sure where he's got them from, but he's got some wires in his hands. Um, oh. For those of you who don't know what a Wismo is, a Wismo is a small robot and they were born of chaos. They like chaos. Hey. Hey, child. Hey. And JD's gonna like <laughs> kneel down. Where'd you get the wires? It sort of bleeps at you and just holds them out for you, sort of realizing you probably shouldn't have them. Okay. These do look like some of the wires from the box you opened at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fair. And okay. Some of the screens outside your window, which you can see screens from here, they flicker on and they're not. There's no Adam Watson playing, it's literally just adverts, like it was, but they're very staticky. Like, they look broken, some of them look broken, it's just playing the same thing over and over again. Hey, child, um, can you do me a big favor and maybe take the wires out on some of the screens that are right outside the apartment? And you hear a couple of, like, Almost, you could say, excited beeps and whirs as that one wheel suddenly starts spinning on the spot and he shoots back out the door. Yeah, okay, good. Um... Okay, so if... Well, if she's still there, Telemachus might just be a floor above us. Yeah. Do we go? Yeah, we, yeah, before something else blows up, or we mean another microwave or something. 
Yeah, child to take care of the screen, so at least... I don't know. I don't know if... He... Can see us through them, or... How it works exactly, but I just... I'd feel comfortable if his face wasn't popping up right outside of our home. You literally see one of the screens go down, power down, as you say that. You you hear like, the, you know when static goes, and it's like everything just stops. I'm proud of you, child. <laughs> And Sorin looks at We should go then. Yeah. I I think this one actually makes sense for Coil to have her knife hands ready. And maybe you all feel like you need to be armed. Dot like pulls out two shock baton. Well, like she kind of like moves back her jacket where her two shock batons are. And there's like a gun on the side of her hip there, and she's got like a knife in her boot. She's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I have everything I need already. I regret making any statements about that. Um, yeah, let's see what we can find. And you can easily go up to the next level. You, the balconies all sort of access it, and the door is locked. Oh, by the way, um, Dot, I don't remember if we told you this, but the last two people who had been to visit the high security area of the OTC were both psychologists. Um, I don't know if these names mean anything to you. James Carraway, Lily Caldas. Do those okay. names mean anything to me, Alice? They mean something to JD. It who? Wait, are, are those one of JD's therapists? Lily, Lily Caladis was. That's why that name sounded familiar. Lily's I knew it was someone. JD, isn't yeah. that your? Yeah. What? What? What about Lily? Uh, Lily Caladis. I just wrote this down from when we were at the OTC. Apparently, she was one of the therapists for Artie's mom. Yeah. Last. I mean, it didn't say specifically my mom. That's at upper level. But I mean. I don't know who else they have up there. It sounded like bad scientists of some kind. I'm not really sure. Right. Right. Well, who else has been up there before? Did, have they mentioned anyone else who's ever been held up there? There was, um, no, I, I'm not, I still, you know, not good at figuring out how to talk to people and make them tell me stuff they don't want to. Um, Did your mom say anything about other, Dawn? Being... About what? Has, uh, I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, she had a lot to say about Dawn. She knew all about that. Like I, I told you, she had been imprisoned at the OTC at one point, and Telemachus right. is finding her and locking her up. Right. But she doesn't really know her personally, I, as far as I can tell, other than having a very low opinion of her. The, the reason why I asked that question in conjunction to what I just said is... JD has said a lot to this therapist. A lot okay. of secrets. A lot of weaknesses. A lot of fears. A lot of everything. Just to find out that this woman like is also visiting the OTC uh, prisoner's ward, where you said, okay, but that's not too weird, right? Like, if they need therapists, they need good therapists, and my therapist is a good therapist. Yeah, I mean, it makes some sense. We don't even know that this therapist went to see my mom or anything like that, but I was trying Maybe to find out who else might be helping her. Um, wait, 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 wait. Don't you think it's patient-client confidentiality? Yes, right, but, um, unless she... Mom say that Dawn could change how she looks. I don't know. Didn't hey, she Alice, say did she say that? She said she, she, said she, said said she could that it was anyway. more that she just liked to effectively wear disguises and wander around Eden. Okay. Just makes me uh, <clears throat> wonder if this therapist maybe knows. 
and and Doc can't finish the sentence. She she keeps trying to say what she wants to say, but she just keeps stopping. Yeah. Um. I mean, we don't know anything about who they saw or anything like that. I don't know if there's any connection. I just I had not mentioned it earlier because of Chris, and now I have. So welcome, Raiders. <laughs> We are nervous. Yes. <laughs> I just... Every single part of our life has been orchestrated in a very specific way. Everything in our life has been monitored, watched, and documented by an enemy. It just seems interesting that someone who is designed to document the deepest parts of one of our brains would be just at the place we were going for information about the end of the world. You're right, and I hear you. I just think when I'm confronted with so many ways that I have been monitored my whole life, I just can't help but hold on to the idea that some part of it, any part of it, is still mine and untouched. I hear you. I know I sound skeptical. It's because I don't want to hear it, but um but I also understand. Something could be up with her. It's always the people closest to us. It is, isn't it? I'm sorry, JD. I don't want to. I don't want to be right. But if I don't say anything, and it ends up being, I know, I know, I know. Maybe after this point, uh, after this apartment foray, we take a visit to the dock, and then we head out to the exit of Eden. Yeah, um, let's see if we find Telemachus, because that may make a world of difference. Well, isn't her apartment supposed to be just above ours? You're literally she's outside right the front door. Yeah, yeah, we're right in front of it. If she's here, oh, she's behind here. this door, it will either provide a lot of answers or a lot more questions. I guess the same questions. You ready? Do we not Always. Or it open? Um, I think we should let Coil decide. <laughs> Coil just keeps. Sorry, I was messaging my friend who just hurt his back and asked me to come over <laughs> to bring him some tiger paw. <laughs> what, what are you asking, friend? Coil? Coil, I just want to. I, I just want. I just want Coil to kick the door open. Don't worry about it. It's just power hour. <clears throat> Coil's gonna look at Dot. Is it okay if I kick this door open? You can kick this door open. I'm gonna kick the door open. We didn't even ring. <laughs> you kick the door open. <laughs> knock, knock. It literally just swings over, like, out and crashes into the other side of the room. And you see an apartment there, a fairly normal looking apartment. And it's, it seems pretty normal. It's a very similar layout to yours. And you can probably sort of guess that with all of the apartments up here, you can see, um, you see a cat hanging on the back of the door as it sort of swings closed behind you. You uh, see again, some of those Frank Sinatra posters you don't see a lot it, it doesn't look like a it does look lived in but it's not like a normal home there there are tools everywhere there's a lot of like some oil and bits and bobs in places there looks to be a desk um 
with some plans and things on it. And you can see very much the same picture you saw down in that small room, but a, on a bigger scale of a man and a woman. And Telemachus stood in between them with a graduation gown on with a smile. And you can also see um, through, which is almost, it's not quite a passageway, it's just a little break off. You can see a whole office of computers and things like that. They look very old and very clunky, but they've always been built into the side of the wall. Okay, I'll start making my way in and around some of that tech. Hello. Hello. There is no reply. However, Ugh. the two Wismos sort of rush in, start jumping up and down on the bed. They run up and down the walls. They grab hold of the cap off the back of the door and sort of put it on top of each other. And they look very excited by the photo, very happy about the photo. And they sort of run over to it upon seeing it and just try to hold it, not pick it up or throw it, like literally they're just holding it. By the way, are the lights on or are we... As you enter, the, the lights turn on themselves. It's not much of a switch, but they just seem to turn on. Should we check the rooms? Um, I think people who are not technologically inclined should check rooms, and everyone who is should check computers. Fair enough. I know who I am, and I'm gonna go check the rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Dot will pull out a shock baton and follow Vest behind Vestal. And Sorin is like, I will stand by the door. Make sure no one comes in. And I'll say that Coil's sort of there My pants. as well. Yeah. And Vestal and Dot, you can walk through all of these rooms and there's no one in here. Again, the, each room looks very much the same. It's pretty untidy. You can see some clothes on the floor, like you see some jeans and just like a white t-shirt and a leather jacket thrown on the floor, but otherwise. Anything else of note? Like if I check I said, uh, side table drawers? Shot's or... gonna be rummaging through everything. Yeah, yeah you can go through absolutely everything. Um, you do find one of the NASA jumpsuits. Though it looks very, very worn and very, very tatty. Um, you can see the badge has been like sewn on a couple of times. You see a lot of like pen and paper sort of everywhere with sketches and doodles on them. Um, but otherwise not too much. Um, you can see some designs for Wismos. This bitch made these Cretans. You're not too sure. It almost looks like she can modify them. Hmm. Um, Dad's gonna look through some of the sketchbooks. Is there anything in there that would make her want to screech and throw the pattern across the wall? Uh, no. You can see designs for, like, internal ship parts, though it's not quite clear whether it's Eden or something else, or like a future design or anything like that. Um, you can see, as I said, these almost alterations for Wismos. Um, and also what Dot will recognize as this big sort of chunky bracelet thing that you saw Futuristic JD wearing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tear that out. Yeah, you can take it. Um, Vestal, and she's gonna take the paper over to Vestal, and she's gonna just point her finger on it. This is the device used to time travel. She just left? Like, it's a picture of the device? It's like, like a sketch. She just seems weird to leave, I don't know, clues like well, I mean, if she didn't expect to get kidnapped. I mean... Oh. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Stop. The true Wismo. 
If I get another cat, that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> I mean, it explains why the apartment's in such disarray, doesn't it? Maybe someone's already been here. Hmm, maybe. Whatever's left to be found is gone. Well, we'll see what's on the computers. Hopefully they'll find something. But I do think that JD's therapist has answers. Yeah, she seems suspicious, at the least. And honestly, now I kind of don't want her around JD. Yeah. Not until we figure out what's going on with her. Well, I've never wanted her around JD, but I have to be the supportive friend. And I can't be the one who's terrified of everyone, but... Yeah, but I mean, someone has to be there for her, for that... I mean, it was traumatic, so... I know. That's why I didn't want to say anything to her, but... We've been watched for, what, 300 years? Yeah, a long time. I'm sure that... I wonder how JD found that therapist. I never really asked her. Maybe there's a clue in that. I don't know. And whilst you discuss this in here, what are Artie and JD doing? Because Coil and Soren sort of stand. Well, Coil's more near the door. Soren is slightly further into the room, of course, by the door. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and uh, figure out what's on these computers. Okay, what 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 are you looking for? Anything particularly that might give us a clue to Telemachus's current whereabouts, um, but also anything that stands out to me, i.e., Don, Adam Watson. Okay. Even. Um. Can you roll me an intellect check, please? Just to see how much you get, because I know you've got speak to machines. Uh, okay. I want to re-roll, though. Okay, go for it. There you <laughs> go. Okay. And you can log on to this computer very easily. It seems like a fairly basic system. However, you can find files that seem to be hidden, and they're almost tracking the vo devices like you can see where it's mapped out uh the screens it's mapped out the screen children facility and monitored it's more like it's monitoring everything and it also looks at a facility it doesn't quite say where it is but it seems to hold dawn at least there is reference to holding dawn you also see on the nat 20 a light flash up and this light shows a source that is projecting onto all of the screens that the video is projecting from as the same video pops up and you can see it recording just briefly off to the side of Adam Watson, the one you saw. And it is a recording on loop. And this dot seems to show you where it is being projected from, effectively. And where it last made contact. Artie? Yeah. Take a look. Okay. So does this look like it's any sort of systematic map of Eden as it exists now? Uh, yeah, this is, it seems to regularly update. It seems to do it almost on its own. Um, these are very old clunky computers. They don't seem to be like anything you've really used before. Um, Soren sort of walks, checks on coil and then walks up towards you. What have you found? JD, you want to explain it? Well, it, it seems like the point from 
wherever Adam's signal has been projected. It shows where it was uploaded from and it shows where effectively it is now. It's it's the source I was looking for earlier and couldn't find. Because it was everywhere, he was everywhere. And you can see those dots where it logged it everywhere, but these sort of indications are now in a different color. And you see the last upload point and where the source is located. And the source is in the room with you. And the upload point is the huge main computer screen near the screen children underground. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's... It's Adam Watson. It's here and it's at screen children. The signal is coming from the coil. Damn. Damn, damn. Um. And it is coming from the most recent upload to the screen below the ground in the lower part of Eden. Damn. How, how is there something so hidden in Coil's code that... What is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong? Are, are you okay? And she just sort of, her head whirs a little bit. Where is the source? But she just said it once. <laughs> she just said it once that time. Hey, Coil, I don't think... Are you okay? Coil is stood by the door. Oh, sorry. This is, yeah. And Sorin pushes past, she's like, Let me look. Let me look. JD, don't. No, I know. Uh, there's something wrong. Um... Uh, can I'm gonna just like snap a screenshot with my bracelet? Mm -hmm. Um, a shot of the screen, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, exit out of it. And Sorin sort of looks over at Coil. We plugged Coil into the main screen. We plugged Coil into the main screen. Soren? We plugged Coil into me. We connected. We connected. And then you just hit I, I, as she starts to like whir and shake. And she grabs you. And it's quite hard. This is almost like her grip has gone. It's like J, D, J, D, as she starts to her legs give way. Ah! Uh, Artie, Artie, oh, and it just keeps going very, very quickly over and over again. Can we see that plug? The plug is not plugged in now. This is from when. It's not a. Earlier. This is when was, you, okay. This is not a current thing. All right. No. This is Sorry. when she has the cold. Oh, Artie's looking for that. Oh my God! Not this is a cold for all of the computers. Ah! All and right, da, da, mm, da, Artie. Okay. And then there's a quiet pause as she collapses on the floor. Ah, T. And completely shuts down. And that is where we'll leave Eden. <laughs> Why? Oh, oh my. Going through so much this season. <laughs> 
<laughs> Everyone okay? She's just a bike. <laughs> Leave her alone. She's just a bike. <laughs> <baby. laughs> I didn't tell you to plug her into Coil. I think no. Coil. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, it was so terrifying! It's like, it's like, there's something wrong with Soren! Oh my god! So, everyone, thank you so much for being here, and please head over to the Discord. We'd love to hear what you think about this chaotic story that um, all of these lovely people are telling. Um, also, uh, please check out all the links that are coming up in chat right now, as well as a big thank you for our sponsors in the form of Bird in the Storm and also Mage Hand Press. Other than that, we will see you next week for more Eden. Yes, go Renee, go, 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 go. Four days. Four days left in the Eden Fall. Four days Casting left. Call yeah. At Eden Fall cast on Twitter. So if you want more information, we're adapting this show as an audio drama. Yes. But yes, yes, please go check that out. Scratch just put the link to it in the chat, so please go and check it out. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Keep evoking emotions, and we'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>